The secret to being a world-class listener is to turn every conversation into a meditation. And there's a trick to it. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Nicholas Rave's Rants. My name is Nicholas Rave, and I have a lot of opinions about a lot of things, and I am going to talk about them here in this show on a semi-regular basis. In today's episode, I want to talk about conversational skills and specifically the skill of listening. So I don't know if you know this about me, but I like to talk. I love it. In fact, I always have. I make a living talking to individuals as well as groups. And I have not always been a great listener. I think for the vast majority of my life, I talked at people and not really with them. And I probably still do this to a certain extent. So as I have worked to develop my conversational skills, I have learned more and more about the power of listening. I think most people don't understand how deeply transformational and healing really listening to someone can be all by itself. You don't have to say anything. I think being heard is actually a pretty rare experience. At least I'm kind of amazed at how many people tell me I have never felt listened to like this. So there's a trick that I've discovered while working on my own terrible listening skills. So the trick starts with a concept that you've probably heard this word before. The word is presence. So what is presence? This is a word that gets thrown around a lot. Well, it's actually the same mental muscle that you exercise when practicing meditation, specifically something called mindfulness meditation. I actually really like that word mindful because it really explains a little bit about presence. Like to be present with another person is to allow your mind to be full of them and what they are trying to communicate to you. So at a very basic level, this means don't be thinking about other stuff while someone is talking to you. If you want them to feel listened to, then you have to listen to them. I'm sure you've been on the other side of this where you're talking to somebody and they are with you physically, but they're not really listening. It's like the, uh-huh, 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 yeah, oh, totally. I would make an argument that most people, a lot of people at least, are actually never present where they really are in the modern world today. We're almost always somewhere else, thinking about something else, thinking about the past or the future or our grocery list or a TV show or someone else you'd rather be talking to. So this is a fairly obvious one. It's like, don't be thinking about other stuff. But the real trick around presence is realizing that there are a lot of times when you might actually think that you're present with what the person is communicating, but you're actually thinking about what they're communicating to you. So I like to think of it like this. Treat a conversation with another person like a roller coaster where you get on the ride and there are ups and downs and slow parts and loop the loops and you may very well end up back where you started. But why did you go on the roller coaster? Because there was a journey that you were going on that wasn't about getting anywhere. It was about, it wasn't about the destination. It was about the ups and downs and the journey itself. This is a great reframe for helping to shut off the critical part of your mind that is assessing what the person is saying while they're saying it. And the biggest place that people screw up their ability to be present is by thinking about what you're going to say next while they're talking to you. So have you ever had an experience where someone's talking to you for like a really long time? 
And you expected this to be like a back and forth exchange, but they keep talking and you have a lot of points that you want to address in what they're saying. And it keeps building and building. And it's almost like you can begin to feel an anxiety because you can't keep track of all the stuff that they've said. And all of the responses, like, you're like, okay, I got the re first response. Okay, no, wait, wait, wait. They just said another thing that I need to respond to. That's the second thing. Oh, oh wait, what was the first thing again? I got a third thing that I got to... This anxiety builds up, and we can actually kind of get uh, almost resentful, or uh, my friend uses the term butthurt, about this while we're trying to talk to somebody. Um, because we feel like they're like burdening us with all this information and not giving us a chance to respond. And then when it's our turn, we're like, okay, I got to try to remember all the things. And you missed a huge portion of the deeper message in what they were trying to communicate because you weren't really listening. You were thinking about what you were going to say next. So what's the alternative? The alternative is let go of the need to consciously Remember all of the points that you need to make and trust your unconscious so that when you're at the end of the conversation, at the end of their monologue, and it's your turn to respond, you just trust that whatever comes up in that moment is what you need to respond to. And think about it this way. What if holding on to the very first thought that you had for a 20-minute monologue prevents you and being like that I have to remember to say that I have to remember to say that what if that prevents you from actually being able to synthesize everything that they said for 20 minutes and come up with an even better response at the end think of it like you go and see a movie with a friend and during the movie you just experience the movie and then at the end, you go, hey, what were your thoughts? You don't have to pause the movie in the theater, uh, <laughs> back when movie theaters were a thing. You don't have to pause the movie and write down notes so that you remember every single point. You just go, oh, well, what was the movie? What do I remember now? And it might be that the very last thing that happened in the movie is the first thing you talk about. In the same way, when you're having a conversation with someone, it might be the very last thing that they said that you address first, which is often, uh, it saves you a lot of time too, because sometimes the stuff that people say at the beginning of a 20 minute monologue, they haven't really formulated their thoughts yet. So if you get an idea of something to say, you can think it and then let it go and allow yourself to go back onto the roller coaster with them. This is the single most powerful trick, if you will, to helping people feel like you're really present and listening with them. And my last tip is allow yourself to get comfortable with silence. Many people feel this deep unconscious anxiety around silence. Like they have this urge to keep the conversation going and not let there be a lull. Counterintuitively though, after you've gone on this roller coaster ride with somebody for however long that is, if you pause and think about what they just said, it actually helps them feel like you're taking what they said seriously and you're processing it. Think of it like you are allowing your unconscious mind to digest what they just said. Just like you eat a bunch of food and then your body digests it and then you turn it into energy. In this case, you're taking all the information and your unconscious is processing and digesting it and then you just allow the response to arise inside. What does that look like, sound like, feel like? It sounds like or looks like, feels like the first thing that comes to mind, that's what you say. But you don't have to hold on to it consciously. You don't have to remember it while they're talking. If it's important, my grandpa always used to say this, when you forget something, if it was important, you'll remember it again. <laughs> so, to recap, listening is powerful and transformational, and it's a skill that most people don't have. 
presence is the key to really powerful world-class listening skills. And presence means allowing your mind to be full of the other person and what they're communicating to you. And the best way to do this is let go of your need to think of responses while they're talking to you. Just go on the emotional journey with them and allow your unconscious to formulate res your responses once you're done. I hope you enjoyed my rant here. And uh, let me know if you have any other thoughts, comments, questions about this topic or about anything else you'd like to hear me rant about really anything at all. I, uh, I am happy to just rant about whatever if somebody gives me a talking point. Table topics in Toastmasters always used to be my favorite thing to do. So like, comment, and subscribe if you've gotten this far in the video, and uh, that'll do.